The second time judo was featured in the Olympics was not at the 1968 Mexico City Games, but eight years later in the 1972 Munich Games. Like many others in the judo world, the Nigif president Charles Palmer was shocked when he first found out, in 1966, that judo had not been included in the Mexico City Games. He immediately petitioned hard for judo's inclusion but it was already too late. The program had been set. He did, however, manage to get judo back into the games for the 1972 Olympics. And this time, it was not an optional sport but a permanent one. In Munich, the weight categories had increased to 6, 63 kilograms, 70 kilograms, 80 kilograms, 93 kilograms, plus 93 kilograms and open, with the preliminary rounds being 6 minutes long. Semi-finals 8 minutes and finals 10 minutes. The mats were no longer on raised platforms but instead had a thin red line around them that acted as borders. The scores were still only upon and was Ari. It would take one more Olympic cycle before Yuko and Koka would be added. There was no more Jogai rule whereby if a throw landed outside the contest area, it wouldn't count. Now, if it started inside but landed outside, it would count. The world of judo has also changed. More players from more countries had emerged onto the scene, and there were many new faces too. Anton Giesink, the giant Dutchman whom the Japanese feared, had by then retired, but he had been succeeded by another massive Dutchman Willem Ruske, who perhaps displayed less flair but was probably more powerful than Giesink. Ruska had decided to compete in both the heavyweight division and the open, which raised the tantalizing prospects of Tejudo gold medals in the same Olympics. Unlike Giesink, who had a more orthodox style of gripping, Ruska preferred to adopt a double lapel grip from which he could launch into Haraigoshi, his favorite technique. Sometimes from that same grip, he could also switch to a Sotogari to throw to the back or Tayotoshi to throw to the front. As expected, Ruska whizzed through his first two matches against Tijini Benkasu of Morocco and Douglas Nelson of the United States throwing both of them for upon. This brought him up against Japan's Motoki Nishimura in the semi-finals. Nishimura was not a particularly distinguished player. His biggest success prior to the Olympics was his win in that year's Asian Championships. However, in Munich he did give Ruska a really tough fight. Their semi-final went to full time with neither man able to throw the other. In the end Ruska won by a decision. In the final, Ruska was not only fighting a capable opponent but the home crowd as well. Klaus Glan of West Germany was a bronze medalist from the Tokyo Olympics and he had won the silver medal at three successive world championships, 1967, 1969 and 1971, leading up to the Munich Games. Maar toen wierp Ruska de Duitser met een flitsende Harai Goshi de vijfde heupwerp op de mat. Glenn was a very seasoned fighter but Ruska was too powerful. In just under two minutes, Ruska smashed him to the ground with a dynamic Haraigoshi for upon. 